Hit it. We're on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. La 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 Oh my goodness. Sliding things in. Happy Tuesday to you. Happy Tuesday to you. Happy Tuesday. Tuesday tribe. Happy Tuesday to you. La 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 la. Okay. Woo woo. Hey everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Tuesday Live. I got to bring Katie up to make sure we're all in the same. We're all in the same thing. Note from Katie. Oh, that was something else. That was from last week. Katie's here this week, right? Yeah, it's, you're gone next week. No, I'm gone next week. You're, you're gone, gone the week after. Week and I'm gone the week after. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Live, Tuesday Tribe. It is time to organize. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to pop on. Pop, pop, pop. If you're new, welcome. Okay, first, I'm not supposed to say anything, so I'm not really going to say anything. But <laughs> I am going to say this. If you've been a TT fan for a while, we've got some exciting things coming up probably in the next 45 days. So keep your eyes and ears open on social media and here on Tuesday Tribe. Of course, whatever happens, whatever big announcement is coming in the next six weeks, um, you're going to hear it first right here, of course, because you are the Tuesday Tribe and this is where things happen. A totally Tiffany. So welcome to uh, all of you today, Tuesday Tribe. If you are new um, and you have it. This is your chance to ask questions about a particular item or type of item or brand of items or challenge that you're having in your craft room. And you can ask that question just by joining the chat and typing, put a bunch of question marks in or the word question in all caps. And that makes it easy for Susie and Katie to find the question. And we will answer it for you. If you are new and you're asking a question, the more information you can give me, the better. So when I say that, more like dimensions of things. So if you're asking about something that I don't have, it's really helpful if you can say, oh, this item is this basic dimension, and then I can help you find a good storage solution for that. Um, we do give away a $25 gift certificate every week, and the way you win that is by getting into the chat. So be sure to say hi, tell us where you're from, share your favorite Totally Tiffany product uh, with us, how long you've been hanging out with the TT brand would be awesome. Um, any of those kind of things are going to get you in the feed, and then Katie can choose a winner from all the people who have participated in the chat. So don't miss out on that. <coughs> all right, have I covered all the basic stuff, Susie? I think you're good. Okay, good. So one of the questions that I got this last week was about, was about paint storage and how to organize paint. And in particular, the question, this particular person had space to do something like this on their shelf. And so this was the suggestion that I made. This is the four level stadium arranger. I'm going to turn it sideways here. La la. So you can see, right? The beautiful thing, so this is available uh, on the website, I believe, uh, uh, probably at scrapbook.com. I should have checked that out first. I'm sorry. Uh, Joanne, bigger Joanne stores carry the desk made line, which is what these products are. So you can find them at larger Joanne stores. So maybe a good option to use with your 40 off coupon. Um, but the nice thing about this, a couple of nice things, it does have um, hardware on the back so that you can hang it on the wall. So if you don't have shelf space, but you want to hang it on the wall. And if you look at the um, videos about uh, redoing Tisa's craft room. So if you search YouTube, my YouTube channel for um, Tisa's craft room makeover, you'll see that we hung the six level version. This is the four on her wall. we just made almost like a shelf of them all hung together on the wall, but it's a great way to organize paint. Why I like this so much is obviously because you can see all the colors of paint. It makes it really easy to take out what you need, put it back, 
but you can see everything. And it's very, very easy to um, keep them in rainbow order, right? Because there are no individual slots, which you'll find a lot in some other paint organizers. If you have individual slots and you get a new color of blue that belongs in the middle, you have to mo literally move every single jar of paint in that uh, rack it's above. Just like your it's just like wine bottles, it's Susie's like saying. Problem. Just like wine bottles. You're trying to keep your wine organized. You got to move everything around because it's all, oh, maybe I should design a wine organizer that you don't have to move everything to put something new in. There's an idea. Ooh. Um, so one of the beautiful things about this, like the pen and ink storage, is that you can just slide everything over and add in the color where it belongs, right? So if you like to keep your paints in color order, rainbow order, this sort of system works great for that. This is the bigger paint bottle. So I have multiples of these with paint in them. Um, but this does also fit it's a little bit more snug in the four levels. So if you l use the bigger bottles of paint, that's going to work in there for you as well um, with, with no problem. And then, of course, also part of the desk-made storage system is this uh, tool tower. So obviously, I have different size paint brushes, paint pens, paint markers, um, and then these little dotty things. I can't remember what they're called right now. Uh, usually there's a bottle of rubbing alcohol in here because I don't know where that went off to. Oh, it's right there on my desk. And then Q-tips. So everything I need to paint right here in one place. It makes it easy. It's accessible. So for those of you who like to paint or are looking for a great way to sort, store, organize your paint bottles, the four level stadium arranger, uh, part of the desk made line is a great option for that. All right, who do we have with us today? Let's see. Anybody? Everybody's popping on, saying hi, Suze. Yes, I've got a question for you. Oh no, Susie has a question. Uh, she doesn't mess Linda around. Linda wants to know any progress on storage for larger sheets of paper and cardstock? No, but uh, that is part. Could be part of the announcement in six weeks. Oh, what? Stay or tuned. stay tuned. Um, I'm writing that down again. It already, that did come up in the recent conversation. So um, it's definitely something larger storage in general is something that I'm working on. There are some tools that are bigger that people are looking for ways to store things like the silk screen option by We Are Memory, um, Memory Keepers, WRMK, uh, American Crafts, uh, larger sheets of paper. If there are larger things that you're trying to store, please do pop, pop that into the feed today because it is a focus for me um, in the next 12 months to develop storage for larger items. So if there's something particular that you are looking for that is bigger than 12 by 12, or at least one dimension is bigger, um, I would def that's definitely something that, that I'm working on. So let me know what your needs are for larger storage. I know one of the big things is paper trimmers, paper trimmer storage. So if you had your ideal paper trimmer storage, would it be portable or at home? And how, how many paper trimmers do you have? Uh, and if you're, if you're wanting portable storage, how many paper trimmers are you going to take with you and what size they are? This is all going to be kind of helpful information. I think that this is an, an area where there's really a lot of need in the marketplace. Most of us, <clears throat> I was talking to somebody the other day about this and she's not a crafter. She's a little bit, but not, and she goes, I just have one. And I go, well, I have like six, but I think there are other people who have multiples of them. Now I don't need to take six with me if I'm traveling somewhere, but how many do you need? How big is your biggest one? Um, that type of thing. If you want to put that in the feed today, that would be awesome because <clears throat> I know that's something that needs to be addressed um, right away. I had a little something in my throat. Oh my gosh, Katie has um, let's see. filled her if feet. If you have this system, do you cover them so they do not collect dust? Also, the stamps and die organization behind you. Oh, no, I do not cover them. So if you're talking about open storage like this or like these, I don't. Uh, cover them. I don't really have a dust issue at all here. Um, but if you lived somewhere where dust was a, was a big deal, then it, it wouldn't be difficult. I'm not sure that paint bottles, this kind of stuff is an issue. These guys are all in pockets, 
right? They have magnets, stamps, and dies are together there in pockets. So they're kind of protected. These are not in pockets, but they are on just on the acetate sheets. They came on and then numbered to fit, to fit the catalog, obviously. Um, so, uh, you know, embossing folders. I don't think there's anything here that really is going to be damaged at all by dust. But if you did have some dust issues, then, then the pockets might be the best option for you. But it would be really easy. I don't sew. Uh, but it would be really easy to create. I mean a fabric cover and you know um with the scrap rack we do have a dust cover for the scrap rack now now the scrap rack um is a little bit different because there's paper in it right things that are going to fade so if it's somewhere near a window or somewhere like that where where there's daylight coming in that you, it might actually fade your materials then a dust cover is also a good idea but i don't nothing over here is going to fade but um the, the scrap rack dust cover has magnets in it. So it sticks to the back of the scrap rack and you just kind of throw it over the back when you're using your scrap rack and just pull it back. And it's just a sheet of fabric that lays over the top of a couple of base units. You could easily do something like that, maybe even just with Velcro on the back of your um, desk made, right? And, and you don't necessarily need to sew. You could do it with hot glue, like buy a piece of fabric that matches your room or that's cute. And then you hot glue the Velcro to the desk made, hot glue the Velcro to your fabric, trim it out on the edge with hot glue or iron on seaming. Yeah, <laughs> Susie's I, like iron on seaming. Yeah, yeah. That's how I sew. Yeah. So there's a lot of those options, even if you don't sew and you need a desk cover. But for me, I don't have, I mean, I have probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, okay. nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17. I've got 17 pieces of desk made within eyesight of where I am right now. I, I've never had a desk problem. But I, I don't know where it's dusty. I guess. Which DB holds the paint bottles that you have in the stadium arranger? Which BB, BB buddy bag? Oh. Which buddy bag holds the paint bottles? Um, the Gale buddy bag will hold paint bottles. Gale will hold paint bottles. Um, Leanne will hold, no, uh, well, Leanne will also, but the Stephanie, see if I have one here with paint bottles in it or just, no, um, ah, here we go, here we go, get in there. So this is the Stephanie buddy bag. So you'll get 24 paint bottles in the Stephanie buddy bag. And then what I've done is turn the containers on their side. So normally when you're using Stephanie for ink pads, you're going to put the boxes this way. So the finger hole is in the top. So with these, I've got the, the, the boxes turned the other way and my paints are stored upside down in there. So you could use Gale for eight, I think, two, four, six, eight. You can use Stephanie for 24. So depending what you're doing, how many colors you need. If you're traveling with paint, you may want to just take less. And then in this case, you're going to find that the Gale Buddy Bag is a good option. Um, but Stephanie's going to hold 24. So either of those. There are a couple more that, that do hold paint, but I think probably um, – those are the best, the most efficient ones. Let's see what Katie's got going on over here real quick. Um, let's see. How many close to my heart stamp pads will the 9x4 toolbox hold? The 9x4 toolbox will hold 9x4 toolbox. Maybe nine, maybe this one, maybe 9x6, what we're talking about. Um, close to my heart ink pads. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. We'll take all this stuff out real quick. Close to my heart. I'm going to guess. So close to my heart also fits in the Barbara body bag. These are the magnetic. This is close to my heart magnetic ink pads. I'm going to guess 
I think that's 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So probably 16. Yeah, you could get, so this is the nine by six um, toolbox. So you could do um, 16. And then of course, if you store it, you can store it this way so that you're storing them flat also. But if you're looking for a nice case to carry, that is a nice fit actually. Thanks so much for asking that question. That's a really great fit. I'm gonna say 16 of the close to my heart ink pads are gonna fit in the nine by six, um, nine by six toolbox. Okay, ready for another one? I'm ready. All right. How do you store all your Toby Tiffany bags when you're not using them? Uh, I have them in a large tote, like a large, um, you'll be surprised to know they're all vertically stored. So I have two totes, actually. I have brand new buddy bags that haven't been used at all. And those are stored side by side in a large tote. I'm looking up at it right now and they're in alphabetical order. So if I need one, I can just go and I know that I have it or don't. If it's a Teresa buddy bag and I get back there by Shelly and there's nothing back there, then I know I don't have it. Um, and then, but actually the ones that are, that are already assembled, they're also in a tote and they're standing vertically as well. So they take up less space. Um, and you could break them down. Like if you, I happen to have these really high shelves in my, um, studio. So the top shelves are great for storing things that you rarely need. Cause I have to pull out the step ladder to get there. Or if Susie's here, she can just get it down for me. Um, but, uh, so they're in a large tote. Um, I, I would think depending on the space that you have available. Now, if you break them down, right, if you fold up the box and pack them down so they're flat again, put them in something that's a file. So you literally can stand them up or lay them down, but you have a file of them and you can, and leave the names on them so that you know, or put a sticky note with the name. So it kind of sticks up like a file tab. So you can flip through there and go, oh, this is Karen or this is Kirsten or Katie, but they're all in order by name. I'm assuming that's how most of you look for them. Of course, that's definitely how I look for them. Um, so if you can break them down, they're going to take up a lot less space, which is great. And then if you, um, but if you leave them assembled, I have, I guess, both ways of the new flat ones and then the assembled ones. Um, but same thing, I stand them on their end and I put their name or label name in, we'll do it this way, right? So this says adhesive. If this is a buddy bag, I put a name on there. Karen, Katie, whatever, stand it this way so it would take up less space and fill that tote better, right? So we're always talking about filling your space left to right, back to front, and top to bottom, while at the same time having easy access. So tip those buddy bags on their side rather than stacking them on top of each other so that when you need one, it's easy to pull in and out, just like kind of the same way we store everything else, right? Using those same sort of principles of accessibility that way. All, All right. right, ready for another one? Yep. Age-old question, any word on the 10-inch slide stash in store? Any word on it? No. No, wor no word on the 10-inch slide stash in store. Uh, sorry. I wish I had an answer. Okay. Mary Weber wants to know, I watched your video where you mentioned taking your stamps off wood stamps. How do you do that? Um, it depends on the wood stamp and the type of adhesive that is used on the wood stamp. Undo might work. It also works to anything that's got adhesive on it. Um, it's going to work to use a hairdryer or heat. Heat guns put out a lot of heat. So you, you need to be careful with your heat gun. Your, but a hairdryer, if you just warm up that uh, wooden block and then use something like a scraper or, you know, I think when I did it, I, I probably used a paint scraper out of the garage. Uh, metal paint scraper because you can get that warm as well and you can slide it under there to remove that uh, red rubber stamp from the wood block if that's what you're talking about I, for some reason it's been years since i did it for some reason i think undo also worked right if you're not familiar with undo i don't know how you craft without it because it helps get every, anything i was looking to see if i had a bottle on my shelf here but i don't um undo might be a great option I'm sure there are other people watching, listening today who have also been through that process. 
So if you have a better idea, please feel free to chime in in the um, feed and, and let us know. It has been a long time since I did that. Um, Peggy also put up a question here about the paper trimmers. What's considered a large paper trimmer? Uh, there are, I just want to know what size you have and, and that you want to take with you. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I guess more my question. Um, it doesn't matter whether large, medium or small, but if you have one that's large, that's big, right? So I have, I'm again, looking at my stack of paper trimmers over there. I have the crafters companion guillotine cutter, which is probably about 16 inches long, probably about nine inches wide and three inches deep. Right. Um, and then it has a little kick out leg. So it measures out 12 inches if you need to do that. Um, so that one is, is I would say bigger, but then I also have the good old fashioned wooden guillotine cutter that our grade school teachers used. Um, that's really kind of heavy and bulky. I don't know that I would travel with that, uh, but I want to know what you would do. So what is your largest paper trimmer? Um, smallest paper trimmer. Would you travel and what you want to travel with, I guess, do you need a paper trimmer organizer that works on your shelf? Or do you need a paper trimmer organizer that is going to help you transport paper trimmers to an event? And if that's the case, what's the biggest size and the smallest size like, or is there a range? Maybe if you like to take three, I want to take three. I want to take a personal paper trimmer, like our old uh, photo trimmers from um, Creative Memories, which is still the blue one, but little mini blue guillotine, still one of my favorite tools, uh, all the way up to maybe this bigger size um, Crafter's Companion uh, cutter as well. So tell me what you're using and do you want how big it is and do you want to store it at home? Do you want to take it with you? Just give me some. So one of the things about not being at trade shows anymore is these are the kind of questions I used to be able to ask people in person when I was at a trade show. Like, what are you doing with this? How are you doing this? What's your trouble here? What do you love about it? Any of that kind of information is really, really helpful to me as I'm going through and trying to design products. So especially since I don't get to see all of you face to face and accost you with my questions at a trade show. So um, any, any size that you're using is good. Um, note from Katie, the four level stadium arranger is 50% off at Joanne right now. So Katie, is that in store or online? I don't even know if they sell it online, but, um, the, the four level stadium arranger is a great tool for so many different things. I'm looking over right now. I have paint in it. I have adhesives in it. I have, my husband has just wandered in. His goal is to try and distract me from what's going on here. He's going to play golf. He's, I wish I had a reverse camera so all of you could know what I deal with, with him on a daily, on a daily basis. So have a good golf game, honey. Play well, win some money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. So, uh, the four level stadium on sale at Joanne, we're going to find out is that on sale online or on sale in store, but I wonder, maybe Katie could also answer this. There's a six level stadium arranger. Also, there's the die stamp and supply organizer, and they carry all of those as well as a hot glue gun holder. So if you do not have a hot glue gun holder, they carry those at Joanne's also. And maybe the whole, maybe that whole line of product is on sale um, at Joanne. And that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be great, actually. So um, let's see. All right, what do you got over there, Susie? Anything? All right. Is there something to store both sizes of crocodile? <laughs> something to store both sizes of crocodile. Um, I don't know. Let me see. I would send Susie after the crocodile, but I don't think she knows what it is. I got to get her in here on crafting day so that she can be subject, so she can all learn all the things. But I think I have both of them right here. So let's see what our options are for these guys. Um, so both sizes of crocodile. So regular and the big bite. So if you're traveling with these guys and you want to put them into one. So I did this with my crocodile, but with my big bite, by the way. So this is just, 
It just reduces the size of it. This is just one of these Velcro, I don't know what you call it, but cable, cable ties, Velcro cable tie. And it just works to hold that handle down so it doesn't take up so much space. So I, I'm going to turn it around this way. I do it. Uh, so I would definitely recommend grabbing one of these. Now, you don't have to have the cable tie looking one. You can have, you could just use a piece of double sided um, hook and loop fabric, if you will. And then the tighter you make it, obviously, you can keep that handle down a little more. So I would def definitely recommend doing something like that. It just reduces the size of it. Now you've got these two. La, 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 la. Um, so if you're using the nine by six tool toolbox, let's see if, if I pull that handle down, to carry tools, then you're going to be able to put them both in here. I need to get an empty one. Oh, I probably have an empty one under my desk, actually. Where all the... Yeah, so... You could easily put them both in the nine by six toolbox and and other things as well. And the nice thing about them is um, they kind of stand up, right? Or this one does kind of stand up in there to make it easy for you to access it. So I would look at the nine by six toolbox as the option for that. I believe that the nine by six toolbox is in stock at um, scrapbook.com and also with the spell binders and the stamps of life. So any of our major online retailers are going to probably have that item in stock right now. I know it's in stock in the warehouse. So I would look at that. And then if you're looking for something, maybe you might, it might also fit in. Oh, it's going to be too short. Um, it would probably also fit. They would probably also fit in uh, probably they would fit in the paper taker what if it will go in the eight by eight i don't think so i think it's two so this is the a4 eight and a half by 11 paper taker so you could definitely store them both in that if you are looking for something more of, of a case just for the two of them um i'm trying to think if they would also go into a buddy bag of some size and shape. I think most of the, the space would be wasted inside a buddy bag though. I don't think this one's someone tell her that is a nine by four, not a nine by six. Oh, nine by four. Have I been saying that all day? I think I have nine by it is a nine by four. I think I said nine by six before also nine by there is a nine by four, nine by six, five by seven. Yeah. So thank you for correcting me. You are correct. The nine by four is the right size. Uh, yes, the nine by four toolbox. Sorry, I think I said that earlier too with them, the, the paint. I think I said, no, it's not nine by four, nine by six, but nine by four is the toolbox of the day. All those examples have been in the nine by four. Thank you. I appreciate that. You guys be ordering the wrong thing, and then you'll be mad at me because I gave out bad information. So thank you for the correction. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Um, will the uh, TT toolboxes be available at Stamps of Life in pink? Will the TT toolboxes be available from the Stamps of Life in pink? Um, that is a question for Stephanie um, at the Stamps of Life. So if you have an interest in that, I would definitely send an email and let her know. She um, cu customs those, that pink is her color of pink, her Pantone color. Everything we make in that color is just for her and her customers. So if you want something in the, the TT line that's in pink, uh, Stephanie would be the one to ask. And then of course, there has to be a big, big enough demand for it because she has to order, you know, you can't just order a couple dozen of them. There's thousands of them involved in a, in a custom order like that. And a lot of times she's, she does it. She, she says, sells a lot of pink. Everyone loves pink. Um, so yeah, I would let Stephanie know we can definitely do it for her. It may even be in the works and I just don't know about it. All right. You ready for another one? Mm -hmm. What is the best buddy bag for the CTMH stamp and bicep? 
close to my heart stamp and die sets. I don't know what size they are. Uh, they're probably six by six. They used to be six by six. So if that hasn't changed, then I would look at the six by six, um, anything that's six by six. So you've got the six by six tab divider pocket and they fit in the six by six fab file and they fit in the failing buddy bag. Um, if you're looking at keeping collections of things together, this new six by six uh, scrap masters, you could put stamps and dies into the six by six scrap master. And also, so especially like with the stamps of life, I don't, I don't know as much about close to my heart, the six by six, the stamps and dies. Now Stephanie's paper works with some of the dies as well. So you'd be able to keep the paper and the stamps and the dies all together. Uh, so that if you were cutting those shapes using the die, um, the die and stamp and paper would all be together and that'll be a perfect use of the six by six scrap master. So, but I, I think <coughs> close to my heart is kind of based on that six by six size. Um, then I would go anything six by six. If it's not six by six, it's probably more, more likely to fit the five by seven. And then you're going to be able to use the Karen buddy bag, the five by seven or the five by seven fab file, or even something like one of the die stamp and supply organizers, if you have shelf space available um, to store those things on a shelf. So I'm pretty, yeah, either five by seven or six by six solutions are going to be great. And I know a lot of people love the Faleen buddy bag for, for that kind of stuff. So yeah, I definitely based on the size of it, I would go and remember, Everything we make that's six by six is bigger than six by six. So you're looking more at like seven by seven or six and three quarter by seven. So that even if there's a, if it's a little bit bigger, it's going to still fit in and out of those things pretty easily. What do you got, Susie? They want you to get me a microphone. Oh, Susie needs a microphone. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I can just yell. What do you use to store your tape runners and the refills for it? Them. What about pop dots, foam squares, circles, Xyron refills, any adhesive? Any adhesive. So different kinds of adhesive, different sizes and shapes of adhesives. Adhesive, how do you store them? I have a four level stadium arranger that is loaded with adhesive. It has like my uh, big pink ATG. It has all different types of adhesives. It has some spray adhesives. I'm looking over there to see what all's in there. Um, it has tape runners in it. It is open and accessible on my desktop. I think there's probably a picture if you look at the four level stadium arranger online showing a bunch of adhesives in that. So that works really great. Um, for keeping other types of adhesives together, these are foam rolls, right? Um, like all foam, these are foam also. We've got glitter on them. I've tucked in my pop dots here, right? My red liner tape is tucked in around the edges here to keep everything nice and neat and flat. So depending on how many you have and what sizes of those things there are, a buddy bag is probably a really good solution. So this happens to be the Kirsten buddy bag. But I think the Leanne buddy bag would probably be great, definitely for refills uh, if you have bigger Thing. So it kind of depends on how many you have. Uh, but I would look at the Leanne buddy bag as a great option. Obviously, um, well, these probably are going to fit now. These have been in here, but these would probably fit in. You could probably use the nine by six um, toolbox. Also, if you want something that zips close and that's a little bit easier to travel with, right? Oh yeah, these would easy, easily fit the taller rolls of tape. It just depends how much you have, right? And um, and how big it is. So a little bit more specific, but I, I would look at, well, you saw that I have a bunch of adhesives in the nine by four <laughs> toolbox, uh, and that's a good solution for bottles. It would also work for not as well. I mean, these rolls would fit in there, right? This size. I've also got these really tall ones. So depending on the size and shape, the nice thing about the toolboxes is that zipper closure and the handle on the top, not to mention the fact that they have this giant 
label pocket on the end, right? So um, that would be a great way if you're going to travel with, with them. Um, the Leanne Buddy Bag also would be a great option if you're traveling with that with them as well. So I would look look at Leanne. And again, how big is your biggest roll? And do you want to be able to keep all those things together? So for me, all my double-sided tape, double-sided pop dots, red liner tape, um, foam tape, it's all in one Kirsten buddy bag. And I chose this be because of these giant rolls of tape. If I had smaller rolls, I would probably put them in the Leanne buddy bag if they would fit in there. So um, I would go with either one of those depending on your on your actual supply of stuff. All right, All right. Let's Ready, seconds. Yep. What is the easiest way to color your stamp pad labels? The easiest way to color your stamp pad labels is to uh, watch the video by. Oh, come on. Who is it? I, there's a link to it. And I, I don't know if Katie maybe ha knows it or Barbara has it or Terry, somebody who's watching. Uh, there's a great video. Someone found. Shoot, shoot, shoot. She uses a gel press and it works really well. Who is it? Ah, it's going to pop into my head. Balzer. Balzer. You, someone out there knows. Balzer, hyphen Balzer or Balzer hyphen. Her last name is, it's going to pop into my head. Um, I've done it. Oh shoot! What is her? I'm gonna I'm writing it down. It's gonna come into my head, isn't it? Uh, I did it the hard uh, way. Uh, Barbara's asking, was that Julie Fay Fan Balzer or something like yes, that? Yes, Julie Fay Fan Balzer. Uh, look for her video. She does it. Just search YouTube. Um, ink pad organization with this. She's the Stephanie Buddy Bag. I didn't even know that. I mean, it just popped up randomly. That's how I found it. This was a couple of years ago but the way that she uses the ink pad. And I think there was some posts up about it. Katie might know. Katie could repost it this week also. Um, Somebody says Tim Holtz does a good video on it too. Oh, and Tim Holtz also does a good video on it. So about getting those. Um, yeah, I did it the hard way. And then I saw those videos and I was like, oh my gosh, that's totally the way to do it. So look, I, and I don't remember all the steps in it. If I remembered, I would tell you, but I believe it involved the gel press um, was what was how she was doing it. But it worked great. It was very, it was much more efficient than when I was doing. I was like, wow, why didn't I think about that? You know why? Because I think about organization. That's my jam. And then there she is, the crafty, the creative, arty side of it. So she did a great job with it. All right. Uh, Katie says, a uh, question from Roberta Patterson. I have Spectrum or tricolored markers. What would work best to transport and store? Oh, do you have a bazillion of them? Because if you have a lot of them, I would go with the failing buddy bag. Ugh. So here is your failing buddy bag with your tri-blend markers. Sorry, and my, my camera's a little close, I think. Um, so the nice thing about the failing buddy bag is that you can store it this way, and now all your markers are flat, and you can see all the colors there um, in the... How many do we get in here? I don't remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you're going to get 72, I think, in um, at least 70 uh, in the failing buddy bag. If you want to store them maybe more by color and in smaller quantities, this is the six by six paper taker. So you can see you have the same benefit with the paper taker and the uh, failing buddy bag and that you can lay it on its side so that your markers are stored flat. But when you're using it, you can stand it up and get into it with the standing position. Now the failing is so much wider that she's a lot more stable standing up than the six by six paper taker. But depending on, you know, whether you're going to separate your aquas from your other spectrum noir, or maybe you're grouping them by color or something like that, that might determine which size bag you want. Maybe you want to store uh, all of them together in a couple of Faleen bags, but you want a six by six handy so that if you're going to take them with you somewhere, you can grab, um, you know, the color grouping that you want and just throw it into a smaller container. But the Faleen Buddy Bag, 
or the six by six uh, paper taker. Both work awesome for uh, tri-blend markers. All right. Oops. How many Tim Holtz Distress Inks can Chastity Buddy Bag hold? I think Chastity Buddy Bag holds 24, but let's check it out. Let's check it out. Chastity. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, 28. Um, but if you look... Here in the chastity buddy bag. So you get your stickers, your label stickers. They're going to be in packed in with your chastity bag. So we don't, don't lose those. Um, if you put seven in, you got the little finger hole in the top. Easy for me to pull out because I have long nails. So I can hook it under there and pull it out. If you go six instead of seven, you have a little bit more space to get your finger in and pull that in and out. So depending on the ease of access, um, you can go 24 or 28, depending if you're putting seven or six in each one of the individual um, little boxes there. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah. On the shelf behind you, what are your, what are you organizing with the tabs? What's the tabs? Am I or oh this? Is it this? Do you think? There are these. This is all dies and stamps and um, embossing folders, um, and they're all these are in the eight by five tab divider pockets. But I also have uh, other size tab divider pockets. So these are um, these are stencils. And then I've got, oh, maybe these tabs, maybe. So I've got embossing folders two ways here, in pockets, or I mean in with uh, colored tabs on them and then also with numbers. So these are just labeled. So I have everything organized by in a catalog. That's why they're numbered. Um, and then this site doesn't have a number on it. Just as an example, if you weren't using a number system, you could just tab that butterflies and keep things in alphabetical order as well. Um, whenever I make a tab like this, I always put, I print two copies out of my printer and I put the label on both sides. And that way if I put it in backwards, then I can still see the label of what that is. But I labeled this side using the numbers and this side not using the numbers, just an ex as an example for people who do and don't use a catalog, which I strongly, strongly recommend using a catalog system. So if that's, if that's what you're talking about, the tabs, and then in each block here, in each section of my die and stamp organizer, I have this little <laughs> paper that just says what numbers are in this section. And that was really helpful for creating the catalog. And it also is a quick reference when I'm looking for a particular number of embossing folder, so I know what re start and finish number in that section is. That's my little little bit of my <coughs> OCD showing there because it isn't that difficult to figure out, but I like like the quick reference part of the whole thing. Okay, when you get the rubber off of a wooden block, how do you get it to cling to the acrylic? Is that to use it again? Uh, I think there is a special adhesive, but you can also just use a repositional tape runner. So depending on um, the different brands and I am not stamping is not my number one um, thing. Some of them stick already like the Tim Holtz one, the backing on it is a clear uh it's clear and shiny. I don't know. I'm sure then that's part of his design work is that it's going to stick to that acrylic block, but I, yeah, that's not, it's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. Um, I have had to use repositionable adhesive tape runner. I know on some of them, once I peeled them off the block, but I'm sure there's somebody out there listening today who there probably is a true solution to that. Actually. I mean, it's common enough that people have are taking their, um, red rubber stamps off of wood blocks. So I'm sure there's 
something that's a, kind of an official solution. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure there's a stamper out there that does. Okay, Katie's got this. Um, will there be any additional toolboxes? Would love one that fits the diamond press marquee, Kylie Schaefer. The diamond press marquee, I don't know how big that is, Kylie, but it may fit in the nine by six. I think the, um, oh no, diamond press marquee, that's probably bigger than the regular diamond press, right? So maybe not. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. Toolbox is larger. What do you need larger storage for, my friends? I'm writing that down. That is my goal this year. So please, and give me some dimensions. If it's something that you don't think I have and you have it around that you can put get dimensions for it, please let me know. I know somebody asked earlier about uh, specifically Xyron cartridge storage, I think. And I'm not even sure what Xyron is making anymore. Um, I love Xyron, but I know they kind of stopped making stuff for a while. There were some weird things that happened in their acquisition. So if you, if you do have Xyron questions, I don't have dimensions. So let me know and I'll try to help you with that as well. I suspect they might fit in the bigger, in the nine by four toolbox though. Um, what are the apps you have recommended as a catalog? I have not recommended any apps as a catalog. I use an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I know there are a lot of apps out there. I just haven't used any of them. I just use, and I use an Excel spreadsheet because I can come up with my own categories and it's searchable. So, um, yeah, it's very, and it's very basic. Like you think, oh, there's going to be so many categories, but there really aren't right. There's all the holidays. And then there's things like flower, nature, camping, kind of the same things that you would have in your scrap rack, which is exactly what mine is that follow, right. Travel sports, football, you know, miss you. Congratulations. Sentiments, that kind of thing. Um, and the thing about a spreadsheet is I just, I have like the numbers and then kind of a lit, like I might say, you know, number one Oh one is a birthday stamp cupcakes, right? I'll put a little description there and then I'll check it off. Oh, it's birthday. It's celebration anywhere that I might need a cupcake stamp so that when I search a uh, cupcake, it's going to pop up. Right. So I just use an Excel spreadsheet. That's been kind of the easiest way for me to do it. And the beauty of the Excel spreadsheet is um, it's, uh, it's on my phone also. So now, there is some, for those of you who are a little bit more committed, like being able to take pictures of all your stamp sets or stamps on a grid so you know what size everything is and then tying that picture to the spreadsheet. Very good way to know what the sizes are. That is the biggest challenge with stamps and dies is you don't know what size they are, which is on the spreadsheet is difficult, but when you actually get to the catalog page, looking at those things um, in your ca actual catalog, then you can see the dimensions there because why well, I always do mine full size, like I photocopy them and put them in there or cut them out and put them in there depending on what, or maybe stamp it. There's a bunch of videos about that, about that cataloging, how to create the catalog and then the spreadsheet as the secondary piece of it for searching things out. Um, just like on your phone real quickly and that kind of thing. But either I do both. So I have the catalog where things are stamped or printed out. And then I have the spreadsheet also. So there's two ways for me to search for it. All, All right. right. Uh, what can I use to store alcohol ink markers? Um, it depends what brand they are and how big they are. So the tri blends fit in the Faleen buddy bag or in the, um, six by six paper taker. The shorter ones fit in the five by seven paper taker, but they also fit in the Deborah buddy bag or the um, Terry buddy bag. So depending on how many you have, what brand they are and how long they are, I would look at those four products for that. There's also the pen and ink palace, which is available at uh, Hobby Lobby, probably available at Joann's as well. 
and that is part of the um, desk made line. And so all of your markers lay flat and that if you're not traveling with them, it's a great way, a great use for them because it's really easy to pull them in and out of that shelf and put them back in the right order every time. So I would look at if you're traveling longer ones, Phalene or the six by six paper taker, let's would be like tri-blend alcohol markers, shorter markers, the five by seven paper taker, the Deborah Buddy bag, or the Terry Buddy bag. Um, it's 950, so you want to remind everybody. Oh, Susie says it's 950. You're supposed to remind everybody. If you haven't made a comment, if you haven't asked a question, get, gotten your name into the chat, you want to do it right now because Katie is going to draw a winner in about five minutes. And she can only draw your name if you've been involved in the chat. So tell us where you are. Tell us who your favorite TT product is, whatever you want to do. Get in that chat. Get your name in the chat so that you can win that $25 gift certificate because we'll be pulling that winner in about five minutes. So you don't want to miss out on that. All right. What is the name of the folder you have next to you with the paintbrushes? This is the Tool Tower. It is available at Joanne's. also available probably at... at uh, scrapbook.com. Um, it's one of my favorites actually, especially for paintbrushes and other little tools like this. I actually have them on my desk as well. I mean, it works great for this top section is wide enough. We should have an empty one for like a rip and ruler, right? But it was designed to hold rulers and tall things. It worked great for paintbrushes obviously too, but um, so that you can put things like rip and rulers in there or 12 inch rulers or whatever. And then all your different uh, sizes and shapes of things. But this is the tool tower. It is part of the desk made product line. Okay. What is the size of the four tier stadium arranger? What is the size? I believe it's nine by 15 by seven, but I will confirm that now. So it is dun, dun, dun. glasses, please. It is uh, nine and a half inches deep. It is 15 inches long. And the highest point of it is uh, six and a half inches tall. Each of the sections in it are uh, two inches deep. And then, of course, they're probably 14 and a half inches long because... It's 15 inches as well. So, yeah. all right. What bag will fit the illusion foil rolls? The illusion foil rolls. I don't know what that is. I don't know what size they are, but I will tell you if it is the same size as, um, where is that? So, if you give me the height, here are the foil rolls kind of come in some basic sizes. If they're fat, round ones like that. This is the Dawn Buddy bag, right? But they will also fit in the, the um, no, this isn't Dawn. This is Katja. That's why I have the name at the bottom so I can remember who everybody is. So this is the Katja Buddy bag. So th they fit in there. If you give me, I don't I don't know what the Illusions brand is, but if you give me the, the dimensions, I will definitely confirm that they fit in that particular bag. Okay. When will the eight and a half by eleven scrap master be available? And will the will the be available at Stamps Alive exclusively first? I don't know who so the question is when will the eight and a half by eleven scrap master be available? Um, <clears throat> I don't have a drop date for that, but I that is well underway. So hopefully um, sooner than later. I'll check it out. As far as who will have it first, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know who's going to have that first. But once we get a drop date, we will know. What are the plastic tubes called that fit on scrap rack to keep pages in called? Uh, they are called um, spinder sleeves. Uh, and I think the only place that carries them is scrapbook.com. Uh, that's not true. I think I saw them on the Crafters Companion website also. So I know we have them in the warehouse because I got an inventory report today. That was uh, after an audit. So it should be pretty accurate. So they should be at scrapbook.com. And then they're definitely at the Crafters Companion website as well. I saw them there the other day. 
Uh, Terry Wiegand says the marquee definitely fits in the nine by six toolbox plus some extra folders. Thank you, Terry. Sounds like Terry probably has her marquee in the nine by six toolbox. Would you consider making more magnet sheets in bigger sizes? Yes. Would I consider making more magnet sheets in bigger sizes? Yes. We are working on new magnets, a new magnet supplier right now, but de that's definitely um, something that's on the drawing board. So. What can I use to store my Cricut cutting mats? I'm always stocking up when they're on sale. What can I store my Cricut cutting mats in? I'm always stocking up when they're on sale. I think, I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to grab one right now. I'm assuming you're talking about the 12 by 12 Cricut mats because um, I don't have a solution for the 12 by 24 mats, but the 12 by 12 mat. It seems to me like these might fit in, um, this is the 12 by 12 paper handler. So if you're looking for a way to store them on the shelf like that, the 12 by 12 paper handler might be a good option. I also think that they may fit In the 12 by, no, they're too big for the 12 by 12 fab file. So um, the tw I think the 12 by 12 paper handler is a good option. And the 12 by 12, do they fit in here? I thought they fit in something else also. Yeah, uh, be a squeeze in there, I think. Yeah, be a tight squeeze in the paper paper handler. Go with the 12 by 12 paper handler. That looks like it's going to be the best solution. But I thought there was something else. They would fit in, oh, maybe um, this guy. You going to fit in there? All right. It's this one, I think. Yes. So this is the fab file uh, that is the album storage box for three ring albums. So they will definitely fit in here as well. So if you want to lock them down in something, go. And this I think is available at um, at scrapbook.com uh, or the twelve by twelve paper handler, which is available. And any, anywhere that carries totally Tiffany products is probably our best selling product of all time. So everybody that sells TT spellbinders, scrapbook.com. I think even Stephanie carries it, even though it's a big item to ship, but I would either one of those two products would be perfect. Okay. Which supply and store case drawers work best for embossing for jars? Supply and store. Am any of them fit? most of the embossing powder jars. It just depends on whether or not you want, what else you want to keep with them and, and how many you have. So this is the 12 by 12, six drawer storage and supply case. You can see I've got embossing powders here. I've got my tool here. I got other stuff on this side, but this is the six drawer. Um, you could, if you had tons of embossing powders, you could put them in these drawers as well. Or you could go with the smaller version. So this is a 12 by 12. Then there's the smaller version, which is sort of an eight and a half by 11. It actually, <coughs> actually works out to be nine by 12 exterior dimension. But um, so if you have less, that might be a good option as well. I like this because you could put your tool and your embossing pens and all those other extra little goodies right there with it in one, um, in one bag. So this is the 12 by 12 six drawer storage and supply case. Uh, uh, would the six by six paper taker work best to fit storage for cricket pens? Cricket pens. Uh, they're probably too short. You'd probably be better off with a five by seven, but depending on how many you have, it, those are probably best fit in the Deborah buddy bag, I, I would think. And maybe even the Barbara buddy bag. Again, depending on how many you have. Let's see, let me pull a couple of these real quickly. Yeah, I'm, I definitely think Deborah's probably, so 
these are Cricut pens. There's some shorter ones. Like those are for the Cricut Joy and then the taller ones. But I'm I'm going to say Deborah is the Deborah's the right bag for these. So this is the Deborah buddy bag. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, even Deborah, they're kind of short even for the Deborah buddy bag. So, I mean, de again, depending on how many you have, probably the Barbara buddy bag, which fits um, the Sharpie markers, uh, and it, it would hold a lot of these. So, yeah, I would go Deborah if you don't have a lot, Barbara if if you do, Barbara Buddy Bag, if you do. The other thing about Barbara is she's got two boxes, two separate sections. So you could fill one section with um, these and one section with um, with other stuff then as well. Yeah, uh, Deborah also probably is tall enough to hold other Cricut tools also, if that's helpful. But yeah, they're kind of shorties. These markers are kind of shorty ones. So, um, But they're definitely too short for the six by six. Okay, how much weight will the shelving unit behind you hold? A lot. Hold 12 by 12 completed scrapbooks. Um, I have 12 by 12 completed scrapbooks on mine, but they're on the bottom shelf. You know, the, the shelves are metal. So that would be a better question for Ikea. And actually, if you went on Ikea and looked it up, uh, Fajelkinj, F. J A L K I N G F J. Oh, Barbara added the link. It'll say right there in IKEA what what the weight limit is. I don't I don't really know. And I do have um I have a lot of heavy stuff. I mean, obviously, dies don't seem heavy when they're alone, but you add magnets and lots of them. Uh, but I'm sure it will tell you. Thank you, Barbara, for putting that link up. Also. Do you know why Crafters Companion is changing the name for products? I'm concerned about the quality. Uh, which products are you talking about? I would like to know that also, and then I could maybe answer that. So if you know what products they're changing the names of, that would be um, that would be helpful, and then I could give you more information on that. But I don't. Is it true Target is selling TT? Is it true that Target is selling TT? You probably found, if you found it online, um, <laughs> Target, Walmart, all of those companies subscribe to a service where they can sell a lot of products that they never stock. So we drop ship for them. So it is likely that you have found a TT product online that at while well, you're shopping at Target, um, and it is a, t a true TT product, and we are the shipper for that product, so you are getting authentic TT stuff. I do not. I, I think that I would know if it was actually in Target stores, but I I could be wrong about that. However, the vice president of sales, Kimberly, is is a we have a great relationship. And when she does something exciting and that would be exciting to have TT products placed in target, she would definitely let me know. So if you found it online, it just is more of a, an algorithm of how things get listed online these days, but it's, it is a TT product. If it's, if you're buying it there and you can return it there, that's a nice thing. Walmart target, any of those stores that sell like that online, you can return it there. They have the same customer service and the same return policies, everything else, even though we're the drop shipper. So, um, yeah, so it's good that it's good. Oh, all right. You got anything else, Susie? We're gonna wrap it up, I think. <laughs> She's like, we'll be there here all day. All right, so spread the word. I'm saying four to six weeks. We've got some really exciting announcements to make coming. Some really exciting things coming up, and um, yeah, I mean, I can't say anything because nothing's set in stone yet. But there's, but I'm just gonna open up the world to speculation, I guess. Isn't that fun? Ooh, and then we'll see who got it right. But four to six weeks, stay tuned, tell your crafty friends, get online with Holy Tiffany Tuesday Tribe, because this is where we will tell, we'll talk about it first. So you guys always know first what's going on in the world of Totally Tiffany. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I got to announce the winner. Winner. Oh, winner, winner, winner. Okay. Um, Oh, uh, Barbara says, I think um, maybe the comment about the name change was taking it from totally Tiffany to easy to organize. 
um, just really quickly, uh, easy to organize is just a little bit more generic of a, a term. And lots of you have been around a long time. You already know that the, but <coughs> that under the Tiffany umbrella were a lot of brands, Fab File, Desk Made, Scrap Rack, easy to organize was one of them that kind of encompassed all the buddy bags. And so I think Crafters Companion is just making that a little bit more prevalent because it's a little bit more generic than totally, totally Tiffany. Um, so that's what you're talking about. All right. This week's winner, Heather Torvey, you have won a $25 gift certificate. Um, you can redeem, well, you will get your gift certificate in your Club Inspire account. So if you are not a member of Club Inspire, please go to the Crafters Companion website, sign up for Club Inspire, and then reach out to uh, prizes, that's prizes with an S, at crafterscompanion.com. Let them know that you are this week's Totally Tiffany winner, and they will load that 25 bucks right into your Club Inspire account so you can buy whatever you want or need to get organized on the Crafters Companion website. All right, my crafty friends. So remember, next two weeks, no, no Tuesday Live. I'm gone one, oh, so I should say HSN is next Monday. That's a weird deal, right? That it's a Monday instead of a Tuesday, but it's next Monday, April 15th, tax day. So get ready to watch some amazing crafting stuff on April 15th. Uh, maybe you got your tax return. You can do a little, little get yourself some little, little new goodies there. Um, April 15th, craft day, HSN. I will be there. We are selling slide stash and store complete collection. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's going to be a great time to orient yourself with it. It is probably one of the best, most flexible, all around the house products I've ever designed. I love it. It's everywhere in my home. Um, so that will be on special on two, on Monday, the 15th on HSN. So obviously I'll be in Florida on Monday, which means I will not be back here in time to do Tuesday live on Tuesday morning. So no Tuesday live on the 5th, 16th, no Tuesday live on the 23rd because Susie is going off on another adventure. So um, I think that's it. I will see all of you the 30th then of the of of april yes so i'm gonna miss next week so my sister's birthday sister Teresa, april 13th i'm gonna miss uh a tuesday live when i get to wish her a happy birthday so this is it happy early birthday sister Teresa. um and i will see all y'all in three weeks i think that makes it the 30th take care everybody have a great rest of your week